from around the globe, it's theCUBE. Covering Upgrade 2020, the NTT Research Summit. Presented by NTT Research. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. Welcome back to our ongoing coverage of Upgrade 2020. It's the NTT Research Lab Summit and it's all about upgrading reality. Uh, heavy duty basic research around a bunch of very smart topics and we're really excited to have our next guest to kind of dive in. I promise you it'll be the deepest conversation you have today unless you watch a few more of these segments. So our first guest we're welcoming back, Kazuhiro Gomi. He's the president and CEO of NTT Research. Kazu, great to see you. Good to see you. And joining him is uh, Yoshi Yamamoto. He is a fellow for NTT Research and also the director of the Physics and Informatics Lab. Yoshi, great to meet you as well. Nice to meet you. So I was teasing the, the crew earlier, Yoshi, when I was doing some, some background work on you and I pulled up your Wikipedia page and I was like, okay guys, to, to read this thing and tell me what, uh, what Yoshi does. You have been knee deep in quantum computing and all of the supporting things around quantum, heavy duty uh, kind of next, next gen compute. I wonder if you can kind of share a little bit, you know, your mission running this labs and really thinking so far in advance of what we, you know, kind of experience and what we work with today in this new kind of basic research. NTT has started the research on quantum computing uh, back in 1986, 87. Uh, so it is already more than uh, 30 years, sir. Uh, the company invested there uh, in this field. Our, the, our, uh, we have accumulated there a uh, lot of uh, sort of our ideas, knowledge, technologies are in this field. And there, uh, probably it is a right time to our, our establish the connection, close connection to our uh, US academia and in this way, uh, we will uh, jointly sort of our advance our, our, our research capabilities toward the future. Our, uh, the goal is still, I think, a long way to go, but uh, uh, by collaborating with uh, American universities uh, and uh, students, uh, uh, we can accelerate the uh, uh, entities evolved in this area. So you've been moving, you've been working on quantum for 30 years. I had no idea that that research has been going on for such a very, very long time. We're, we hear about it in the news and we hear about it at a place like IBM and, and Accenture has a neat little demo that they have in the new Salesforce period. period. What, what, is, what makes quantum so exciting and the potential to work so hard for so long, and what is it going to eventually open up for us when we get it to uh, to commercial uh, availability? The the, uh, the honest answer to that question is uh, we don't know yet. Uh, still, I think after thirty years, I think hard working on quantum physics and computing, uh, still we don't know the here uh, are. Uh, killing applications are, are even, I think, are, uh, we feel that the current, all the current efforts are not necessarily, I think, are practical uh, from the engineering viewpoint. So uh, uh, it is still a long way to go. But uh, the reason why NTT are, has been continuously working on the subject is uh, basically the very, uh, sort of our uh, bottom or a fundamental or a side of the present day communication and the computing technology, uh, there is always a quantum principle. And there are, it is very important for us to understand the uh, quantum principles and their quantum limit for communication and the computing, uh, first of all. And if we are lucky, Maybe uh, we can uh, uh, make a breakthrough for the next generation communication and the computing technology based on quantum principles. Right. But the second right. one is uh, really, I think, uh, just a guess and uh, uh, hope, uh, researchers hope, and nothing 
maybe a solid deal. Right. Well, and Kazu, I want to go go to you because it really highlights the difference between you know kind of basic, hardcore, fundamental research versus building new applications or building new products or building new you know, things that are going to be, uh, you know, commercially uh, viable and you can build an ROI and you can figure out what the customers are going to buy. It really reflects that this is very different. This is very, very basic with very, very long lead times and very difficult um, execution. So when, you know, for NTT to spend that money uh, and invest that time in people for long, long periods of time with not necessarily a clean ROI at the end, that really, that's really an interesting statement in terms of this investment and thinking about something big like upgrading reality. Yeah, so that's what uh, this, yeah, exactly that you talked about the, what the basic research uh, is. And uh, from NTT's pers perspective, yeah, we feel like we, as uh, Dr. Yamamoto, you, uh, he just mentioned that we've been investing into the 30 plus years of uh, time in this field and uh, you know and we uh, well I, I could talk about why this is important and some of them is that uh, you know that the, the current com computer that everybody uses we are certainly well there might be some more areas of improvement but uh, we will someday in I don't know four years five years ten years down the road, there might be some big roadblock uh, in terms of uh, more capacity, more you know powers and st stuff. We may run into some issues, so we need to be prepared for those kind of things. So, yes, we are in a way fortunate uh, that we are we have a great team to uh, and a special uh, and a expertise in this field, and uh, you know we have uh, we we can spend uh, some resource to towards that. So why not? We should just do that in preparation for that big, um, big wall, uh, so to speak. I guess we are expecting to kind of run into uh, five, ten years down the road. So let's just looking into it, invest some resource into it. Uh, so that's where we are. We are here, and uh, again, I, from my perspective, we are very fortunate that we have all the resources that. Uh, we can do. That's great, right, that they give it to you. Dr. Yamamoto, I wonder if you can share what it's like in terms of the industry and academic working together. You look at the, the presentations that are happening here at the event, um, all the great uh, uh, academic institutions are very well represented, uh, very deep papers. You were at NTT, you spent some time at Stanford, Talk about how it is working between this joint uh, development with great academic institutions as well as a great company. Our, traditionally, our, in the United States, uh, there have been always uh, two complementary opportunities uh, for training uh, next generation uh, scientists and engineers. Uh, one opportunity is uh, uh, junior uh, faculty position uh, or postdoc position in academia, uh, where uh, main emphasis is education. Uh, the other opportunity is uh, the a junior researcher uh, position uh, in industrial lab, uh, where uh, apparently the focus uh, emphasis is research. And uh, uh, eventually uh, we need uh, two types of uh, intellectual leaders are, are, are from two or different uh, career paths. And uh, when they sort of work together uh, with a strong educational background and a strong research background, uh, maybe we can uh, make a wonderful uh, breakthrough, I think. So it is very important to uh, sort of uh, connect the uh, between two uh, institutions. Uh, however, uh, in the recent past, uh, particularly after Bell Lab disappeared, the uh, uh, basic research activity in industrial lab uh, decreases substantially. And uh, uh, we hope NTT research can contribute uh, to uh, sort of the building of uh, 
uh, fundamental science in industry side are. And there, uh, for that purpose, sir, are the uh, uh, close collaboration with sir, uh, research universities are very important. So uh, the first task we have been working so far is to uh, build up this sir, uh, industry academia connection. Well, huge compliment to NTT to continue to fund the basic research. Because as you said, there's a lot of companies that were in it before and are not in it any anymore. And when you often read the history of, of, of computing and a lot of different things, you know, it goes back to a lot of times some basic, some basic research. And just for everyone to know what we're talking about, I want to read a couple of, of sessions that you can attend and learn uh, within Dr. Yamamoto's space. So it's coherent, nonlinear, dynamics, combinatorial optimization. That's just one session. Um, I love it. Physics successfully implements Lagrange multiplier optimization. I love it. Photonics accelerators for machine learning. I mean, it's so it's so interesting to read basic um, research titles because the you know it's like a micro focus of a subset. It's not quantum computing. It's all these little smaller pieces of the quantum computing stack, and then obviously very deep and rich. Uh, deep dives into those those topics. And so again, Kazu, this is the first one that's going to run after the day, the first physics lab, but then you've got the crypto cryptography and information security lab, as well as the medical and health information lab. You started with physics and informatics. Is that the, is that the history? Is that uh, the favorite child? You're going to lead that day off uh, on day two of the event. We did uh, draw a straw and then Dr. Yamamoto won it. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Rochambeau, right? Uh, it's always fair. <laughs> uh, but uh, certainly, this quantum. Well, all the topics certainly are. Our focus is uh, uh, the basic research. Uh, there's definitely a commonality. But I think the quantum physics is, in a way, kind of very symbolic uh, to kind of show that the, what the basic research is. And uh, well, many people have many ideas uh, associated with the term basic research, but I think that the quantum physics is certainly one of the strong candidates that the many people may think of. So, well, I think this is definitely a good place to start uh, for this uh, session. Uh, from my perspective. Right, well, and it almost feels like that's kind of the foundational even for the other sessions, right? So you talk about medical or you talk about cryptography and, and information, still at the end of the day, there's going to be compute happening uh, to drive those processes, whether it's looking at, at, at medical slides or trying to do diagnosis or trying to run a bunch of analysis against huge data sets, which then goes back to you know, ultimately algorithms and ultimately compute and this opening up of this entirely different set of, uh, of horsepower. So Dr. Yamamoto, I'm just curious, how did you get started down this path of, of this crazy 30 year journey on quantum computing? Our, the, the first quantum algorithm was invented by David Deutsch our, back in 1985. Our, this particular algorithm uh, turned out later the complete failure are <laughs> not useful at all. Are, and he spent seven years actually to uh, fix the uh, loophole and uh, uh, invented their uh, first successful algorithm. That was 1992. Uh, even though the, uh, the first algorithm was a complete failure, uh, that paper actually are created there a lot of uh, excitement among the young scientists at NTT here, basic research lab, uh, immediately after the paper appeared. And uh, 1987 is actually, I think uh, one year later, the, uh, so the, uh, this paper appeared. And we sort of are, are uh, agreed that there may be the, uh, one of the interesting future direction is uh, a quantum information processing, and that's how it started. It's a, it's a spontaneous sort of our, our activity, I think, uh, among uh, young uh, scientists uh, of late 20s and early 30s at the time. And, and what do you think, uh, Dr. Yamamoto, that people 
should think about it. If, 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 if again, if we're at a, at a cocktail party, um, not, with, not with a bunch of, of, of people that, that intimately know the topic, how do you explain it to them? How, how should they think about this, this great opportunity around quantum that's kept you engaged for decades and decades and decades? Our the here, the quantum is everywhere. Uh, namely, I think uh, this world, uh, I think, uh, is uh, fundamentally based on uh, and created from quantum substrate. The at the very bottom of our uh, sort of world are uh, consist of our electrons and photons and atoms and those. Uh, fundamental uh, particles uh, sort of behave according to quantum rule, and which is very different from uh, uh, classical reality, or, uh, namely the world where we are living uh, every day. Our, the, the relevant question, our, uh, which is also interesting, is how our classical world or classical reality uh, surfaces uh, from the general or universal quantum substrate, uh, where our uh, to uh, the uh, intuition uh, never works. Are uh, and that sort of a fundamental question actually opens the possibility. I think uh, by utilizing quantum principle or a quantum classical sort of a crossover, are. Uh, mm -hmm our uh, principle, uh, we can revolutionize the uh, uh, current limitation uh, in com communication and the computation. That's basically the uh, start point. Uh, the, uh, we start from quantum substrate, and the classical world surfaces uh, on top of quantum substrate as an exceptional uh, case, and we build the uh, sort of our communication and the computing machine in this uh, exceptional uh, sort of our uh, world. But if we dig into a uh, quantum substrate, the uh, new opportunities is open uh, for us uh, or not. That's uh, somewhat the fundamental question. I think. It's great. Uh, very well, I'm not, yeah, it, uh, I don't, we can't go too deep because you'll lose me. You'll lose me long before uh, <laughs> before you get to the bottom of the uh, of the story. But uh, you know, I really appreciate it. And, and Kazuo, back to you. This is your guys' first event. Uh, it's a really bold statement, right? Upgrade reality. I just wonder if, when you look at the at the registrants and you look at the participation, and what do you kind of anticipate? How much of the anticipation is is kind of people in the business? you know, kind of celebrating and, and kind of catching up to the latest research. And how much of it is going to be really inspirational for those next, you know, early 20 somethings who are looking to grab, you know, an exciting field to hitch their wagon to uh, and to come away after this to say, wow, this is something that really hooked me and I want to get down and, and really kind of advance this technology a little bit further, advance this research a little bit further. So yeah, for from my point of view, for this event, uh, I'm uh, expecting there are quite wide range of people. Uh, uh, I'm I'm hoping that are interested in uh, to this event. Uh, like you mentioned, the, uh, those are the you know the business people uh, who wants to know what entity does and then uh, what uh, what uh, you know the wider spectrum of entity does, and then. Uh, and also, uh, especially like today's events and onward, very specific to each topic. And we go into very deep dive. And, and uh, so to, to this uh, session, especially in uh, a lot of uh, participants from the academia's uh, world uh, for each, uh, each, sub, uh, each subject, uh, including uh, students and then uh, some other uh, basically, yeah, yeah, students and professors and teachers and all those people as well. So, um, so that's uh, uh, our, my expectations. And then uh, from that the program arrangement perspective, that's always something in my mind that how do we uh, address those different uh, kind of uh, segments of the people? And we are all welcoming, uh, by the way. 
uh, for those people. So uh, to me, uh, to, uh, so yesterday was the general sessions where I'm kind of expecting more uh, that the business and then perhaps some other uh, more, more general people who just curious what uh, NTT is doing. And uh, so instead of going too much details, but just to give you the ideas that the, what's that the, our vision is, and also, you know, uh, a little bit of uh, fla uh, well, flavor is a good word or not, but give you some ideas of what we are trying to do. Right. Um, and then the better from here for the next three day, obviously for the academic people and then those who are the experts in each field, probably day one is not quite uh, deep enough, not quite addressing what they want to know. So day two, three, four are the days that uh, designed for that kind of uh, requirements and expectations. Right. And, and are most of the presentations built on academic research that's been submitted to journals and other formal you know, peer review and peer publication types of activities? So this is all very formal, very uh, professional, and very probably accessible to people that know where to find this information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Yep. Well, I, I have learned a ton uh, about NTT and a ton about this crazy basic research that you guys are doing and a ton about the fact that I need to go back to school if I ever want to learn any of this stuff because uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating tale and it, it's, it's great to know uh, as we've seen these other basic research um, companies, not necessarily academic, but companies kind of go away. We mentioned Xerox Park and Bell Labs that you guys have really picked up that mantle, not necessarily picked it up, you're already doing it yourselves, but really continuing to carry that mantle so that we can make these fundamental basic building block uh, breakthroughs to take us to the next generation and as you say, upgrade the future. So again, congratulations, uh, thanks for sharing the story and good luck with all those presentations. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. All right, Yoshi, Kazu, I'm Jeff, NTT, Upgrade 2020. We're going to upgrade the future. Thanks for watching. See you next time.